Hi, this is Laura Rogers, and one of the most frequently asked questions that I see in SharePoint is how do you do a cascading drop-down box? Now, what is a cascading drop-down box? Well, it is when you would like to have a drop-down box in your form where people can select an item in the first drop-down box, which will affect what appears in the ne next drop-down box, and this cascades on down to however many levels. Like, for example, you could pick a country, and then when you pick a country, that would narrow it down to the states in that country, and then once you pick a state, then your next um, drop-down box might be limited to just the cities in that state. So that's the kind of thing that a drop down, a cascading drop-down box will do. Now, there isn't just an out-of-the-box way to do that in SharePoint, but there is an out-of-the-box way to do that in InfoPath. So I'm going to show you in InfoPath 2007 how to easily create a cascading drop-down box. Now we're using a SharePoint list. So initially we've created this SharePoint list called locations. And this is going to be the basis for our cascading drop-down box. So we have three fields in this list called locations. We have region, state, and branch. So we have um, basically Midwest, Northeast, Southeast, and West are our regions. And then within each of these regions, you're going to have some states and then we have some branch numbers which should be like your you know just your branch offices and, and the branch offices in this example are just um, numbered so what you want to do is create a form that lets you pick a region and then once you've picked a region it then filters the state box by only states within that region so let's do that in infopath 2007. okay here's infopath and i've created just a simple blank form and I've typed in region, state, and branch number, and I have places to put these fields. So I'm gonna go in design tasks and go to controls. I'm going to pick drop down list box for each of these. So I'm just dragging drop down list box. And then once I've, just as a general good practice in info path, once I've created these fields, I wanna go ahead and name them quickly. And branch. Okay, so now they're named correctly. And when I go into design tasks and go to data source, I can see that I have now the five fields in my form. Now, um, each when I select an item in the drop down box, whatever I select is going to be stored in these info path fields. And then once the form is submitted, then those you know, the, the fields, that information is stored and then it's submitted up to info, up to SharePoint, if that's what you choose. We're not going to go into the whole form submission thing. We're just, I'm just going to show you how to do the cascading drop down boxes in this demo. So I've created these um, drop down boxes. The next thing to do is to create a data connection that will um, grab that information from SharePoint. Now I'm not writing back, I'm not writing anything back to the SharePoint list. I'm just receiving information from it as a reference. So create a new, co new connection to receive data. And then I want to receive it from a SharePoint library list. And this is where I have to put the URL to my site. So my site is this. Just paste it in there and it will look it up. Now, uh, InfoPath is showing me a list of all of the lists and libraries on that site, and the one that I need in this example is called Locations. So I need these three fields, region, state, and branch. Um, so when I receive data from that SharePoint list, I'm receiving those three fields, so you can be selective about which fields you get. And then this offers me an, an, you know, an option to store the data in the form template. That's up to you. And then this one lets you name this data connection and allow to re retrieve the data right when the form is open. In this example, I'll just allow that. And now I have a new data connection called locations. So for each of these three drop-down boxes, I'm going to be using the data from that location. So I'm going to be picking data from that list, but once I've selected it in the SharePoint, uh, in the InfoPath drop-down box, it's then stored in that form in these fields that we've defined. So I double clicked on region and now I want to look up values from an external data source. The only data source I've defined is location, so there it is. And then within locations, I want, for this one, I want to pick the region. 
And um, show only en entries with unique display names is important to check because if I have, let's go back over and look at my list, I have multiple items for each of these uh, regions. So I want it, I only want to show unique ones so that I don't see, you know, 15 or 20 different items in the list. I only see one Midwest, one Northeast, one example, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so click OK. And now I'm going to move on to state real quick. Now this is where it starts getting a little trickier because I'm not only going to pick the state, but I'm going to filter the data. And that is the key behind the cascading dropdown. So I click on state, then I want to filter the data. So I want to say region, which is the one above it, is equal to, and then since the user has already clicked on region and selected a region, it's going to be stored in not this uh, not this location's data source, but the main data source. It's already going to be stored in this region. So let me show you what that's going to look like. So if they picked southeast, for example, in this first in the first drop down box, you're you want, you're going to see a filter of these states that exist in southeast. So that's how the filter is going to work. Okay, so filter by region in the and one data source is equal to what's already stored in the second data source. Click OK, click OK. Oh, I got to make sure I double uh, uh, check the box to show only the entries with unique display names because I don't want to see multiple listings of each state. So with the branch number, I have to do the same thing. Pick branch here and then filter the data again. So this time I'm going to say state, which is the one right above branch, is equal to the data that has been stored in the main form, not in the secondary data source. So the data that's already been stored in the state field because the user's already picked that state at that point. Click OK, 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 OK. And then this one's probably already going to be unique, but it doesn't matter if I check it on here. Save my form, yes. Preview, yes. And now I'm going to pick my region southeast. And then, look, it's filtered down to show only the states in the southeast. And now it's only showing those three branch numbers that I have in Alabama. All done. Thank you.